Those wondering whether Putin has always been paranoid and capable of evil need only ask Mikhail Khodorkovsky. If Vladimir Putin is the Mr. Hyde of Russia, then Khodorkovsky is the Dr. Jekyll, a former oil tycoon. Khodorkovsky has made more, more wealth than many could even imagine. That was until his pro-democracy ideals landed him in a Siberian prison and then exiled at the behest of Putin. And for some, the former oligarch has become something of a hero. Khodorkovsky's rise to riches happened when the communist system collapsed under Boris Yeltsin. Russians could start investing in state-owned industries, and oil was Mikhail's interest. An auction delivered him the oil company, Yukos, and he became part of the first generation of oligarchs. But in the 2000s, the oligarchs met their roadblock, one Vladimir Putin. Putin came to power promising to rein in power of oligarchs and quickly surrounded himself with former KGB comrades who would become the next generation of oligarchs. In 2002, Putin's message was loud and clear. You're either with me or get out. Well, Khodorkovsky apparently didn't get the message. Mikhail's Yukos was once Russia's biggest oil producer, but all that changed in an instant. In 2003, at a business roundtable with Putin, Khodorkovsky pointed to a questionable deal that had caught his attention as an oil man. He implied that Igor Sekin, a, an old friend of Putin's who was also in the KGB, had enriched him. Lawyers put together our funding. Where you and you have a website, right? What's yeah. the website? We have a website called The People. After voicing his concern about corruption, he was suddenly charged with tax evasion and embezzlement. Ironic, given that the Russian government is at what is now essentially founded on corruption. A judge ordered Khodorkovsky held without bail, and eventually the trial was staged. It was managed by Putin himself. Mikhail was sentenced to nine years in Siberian labor camps and became Russia's most famous political prisoner. In prison, he was ready to face death. But after 10 years, Mikhail was put on a plane to St. Petersburg, where he was handed a passport and a parka before boarding a plane to Berlin in exile. Most men who cross Putin are found mysteriously poisoned or killed, no matter where they are in the world. But Mikhail seems unfazed by the fact that so many of Putin's critics have met violent ends. He is now described as the Kremlin's leading critic in exile. For years, Mikhail has prepared for a revolution, convinced that Putin, despite his popularity and his support inside the military, will soon fall from power. Now, a former billionaire, he continues to dream of transforming Russia into a European-style democracy. That notion seems laughable right about now, of course, as we watch a full-scale tyrant in action. But Khodorkovsky is convinced that Putin's invasion of Ukraine has significantly reduced Putin's chances of remaining in power and has done irreparable damage to Putin's regime. Earlier today, I had a chance to talk to the exiled businessman now living in London. Joining me now is former Russian oligarch and Putin critic Mikhail Khodorkovsky. Mikhail, thank you so much for joining us. I'll keep this very concise. I, I'll tell my audience very quickly. During the, the, the days when Russia went from communist to semi-communist to semi-capitalist, uh, there was two oil companies. There was Yukos and Rosneft, and you were part of one of them. Putin at one point did something very terrible to you. Please explain what Putin did to you that was so terrible. There were more than two oil companies, uh, but this having been said, uh, what Putin did was that when my company, Yukos, tried to enter a joint venture with uh, U.S. oil companies, what Putin did was uh, put me in prison for 10 years and take away my company. And, Mikhail, at one point you were listed as one of the most wealthy men in Russia, and that all went away because Putin threw you in jail, and then you spent somewhere around nine or ten years in jail. Tell us about Putin. What do you think of Putin, the person, the man, and the leader of Russia? He started out as a reasonably modern and progressive-minded individual and leader, but as is often the case with, um, let's say, Middle Eastern leaders, he eventually evolved or devolved, shall we say, into an autocrat, and uh, by now he has become a dictator. So what do you think should happen, given what you know right now with his invasion into Ukraine, what do you think should happen? to Vladimir Putin, and how does he, how does the world stop him? 
Putin is losing, has been losing. Uh, the situation is somewhat hanging in the balance, but he will eventually lose this war. What the world can do to help is to introduce a limited no-fly zone. One thing that must be understood is that Putin will forever be an enemy of the United States. And that is not going to change irrespective of what the United States is going to do. Mikhail, so many people around the world are wondering, with the, with the wealth that the Russian oligarchs have had and, and now being uh, taken by various countries in France, in the United States, in Germany, in Great Britain, taking back the oligarchs' wealth, the ships, the yachts, the, the, the homes, at some point will the oligarch community within Russia call for Putin to be taken away or to be taken out, perhaps? Uh, Putin dictator. What can happen is that, given that Putin is a dictator and the oligarchs are his minions, they cannot be expected to come up with any kind of uh, significant active steps. Uh, what must be kept in mind is that Putin may resort to using oligarchs as a tool to influence Western politicians, society and leaders in order to implement his aggressive policies. And what can and must be done is that, for the duration of the war, Putin must be cut off to the maximum extent possible from any financial leverage and uh, any finance available to him, including the wealth available to the oligarchs. Everything that can be frozen must be frozen. Mm -hmm. And, folks, you're hearing that from a, a former Russian oligarch right there, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, thank you for joining us again. Mikhail is in exile. He's been in exile from, from the fear of, of, of that dictator Putin that we talk about. Mikhail, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.